This is Unit 8, Part 5. Now, just to remind you, the small intestine is uh, distal to the stomach. Uh, it goes from the uh, pyloric sphincter to the ileocecal sphincter, or valves. Uh, the order of uh, the three segments of the small intestine are the duodenum, the jejunum, the jejunum and the ileum. And uh, <clears throat> uh, the food uh, material that was eaten uh, enters into the small intestine as chyme <clears throat> from the stomach, a uh, paste which is acidic and has some digestive enzymes in it and is uh, chopped up fairly uh, fine actually. Uh, but on, in the small intestine, it undergoes further uh, processing so that the uh, main biomolecules, that is carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids can be broken down further so that they can be absorbed. <clears throat> so the wall, in fact, is uh, the place where, uh, the point where the absorption occurs and therefore the larger the surface area, the more absorption can happen. And so the surface area, as I've described before, is uh, designed in a way that maximizes the, um, the area. So there are large folds, um, large circular folds as shown here. Uh, you can see the uh, folds r running around the, um, circumference, inner circumference of the uh, of the small intestine in this case. And uh, on, on those, on the surface of the mucosa, you have uh, these finger-like projections. And the finger-like projections are called villi, that's plural, a single one is villus. So they're completely, these villi, which form the part of the mucosa, uh, are completely covered with a um, simple columnar epithelium of cells. And that simple columnar epithelium is shown here at the surface. This is a villus and cross section, but all of this pink material here is in fact uh, a simple columnar epithelium covering the entire surface of these uh, villi. So the uh, mucosa, of course, is made of the uh, mucosal epithelium, the simple uh, columnar uh, mucosal epithelium, um, the lamina propria, which is just underneath, uh, that has uh, blood vessels and uh, lacteals in it. And here, all of this is lamina propria, and then a thin layer of muscle called the muscularis mucosa. After that, you get into the, the next major layer, which is called the submucosa. So all of this going up here, all of that is part of the mucosa. And you see one of these villi in cross in longitudinal section, and you see very nicely in the photomicrograph, and you see very nicely the uh, simple columnar epithelium and the odd uh, goblet cell there. The goblet cells, of course, produce the protein mucin, which when it comes into contact with water, becomes mucus. If you were to look at a single uh, surface epithelial cell the, of the simple columnar epithelium, and that's shown in this diagram here, you would see that at the very surface, it has tiny projections as well. And these are called microvilli. So the microvilli are in an individual cell, right? A single cell on the surface, single cell, and they act to further uh, increase the surface area for absorption. <clears throat> now, as I said, these are the molecules that uh, are taken in with food, the four major biomolecules that all living things are made up of. And they need to get broken down by uh, digestion, the digestion process, into their individual building blocks, which for carbohydrates are monosaccharides, for proteins is amino, they're amino acids, for fats it's the fatty acids of the three fatty acids that are 
attached to a glycerol, so fatty acids and glycerol, and for the nucleic acids, nucleotides. Now we'll talk about this uh, in terms of the molecule that is uh, being digested, the enzymes involved, uh, where those enzymes are uh, produced, uh, where they act, because the site of production is not always where they're acting, uh, and uh, how they're absorbed, how the molecules get absorbed. I remind you that uh, digestion involves hydrolytic enzymes, the polymers that make up the four major biomolecules in living things are, are uh, can be split apart by hydrolytic enzymes. So the process is hydrolysis catalyzed by hydrolytic enzymes and they're broken down into individual monomers as shown down here at the bottom. And this goes for all of the for all of the different four different uh, biomolecules. Here you see some examples of carbohydrates. These are disaccharides. They're made of two monosaccharides linked together by a glucose linkage or a glycosidic linkage rather. So for example, here is sucrose, which is made of one unit of fructose and one unit of uh, glucose. So in a hydro hydrolytic uh, reaction, breaking it down hydrolysis, you get two, these two monosaccharides from this uh, disaccharide. Lactose and sucrose, of course, is uh, ever present in the modern diet um, in the sugar bowl, coming from either usually either sugar cane or um, sugar beets. Another commonly consumed uh, polysaccharide or uh, carbohydrate is uh, lactose, which is made of one unit of glucose and uh, I'm sorry which is made of one unit of glucose and one unit of galactose and another disaccharide we're looking at three disaccharides sucrose lactose and the third one is uh, maltose which is made of two uh, glucose units the only one that they're showing uh, the breakdown reaction for is sucrose in this diagram. So carbohydrates are polymers. Uh, typically, they're made of large polysaccharides or polymers uh, of individual uh, monosaccharides. The monosaccharides are often called simple sugars. I think monosaccharide is a better term. Some very commonly and important, uh, a common and important uh, polysaccharide, not so much in the diet, but actually more in the body itself and muscles and uh, in the liver, is glycogen, which is the storage form for glucose. So glycogen is made up of many, many monosaccharide units of glucose strung together. There can, in fact, be up to 50,000 monosaccharide units to making up the glycogen polysaccharide. So it can be up to 50,000 individual uh, glucose units. That's my uh, impression of a hex uh, hexagonal glucose. Not very good. Uh, another one, and is quite which is quite important in the diet, is starch, which is also made of many um, um, glucose monosaccharides strung together by glycosidic linkages, but uh, or glycosidic bonds, but in a different pattern from glycogen. So uh, starch and glycogen are quite important uh, and used as storage forms for uh, carbohydrates in both plants and animals, in animals in the form of glycogen and in plants in the form of starch. Okay, for the next uh, several slides, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you a diagram like this in which you see the uh, food material listed, the enzymes that can break it down and where they come from, uh, where they act. Uh, for example, salivary amylase comes from the salivary glands. So the enzyme is salivary amylase. The source is in the name from the salivary glands, but its site of action is not in the salivary glands. It gets secreted into the mouth and that's where it's acting. 
on food, on starch, acting on starch in the mouth. And the last is the pathway of absorption or the mechanism of absorption. And we're going to go through each, all, basically we're going to go through this table in the next few slides. Okay, so carbohydrates uh, are made of many monosaccharides or, or just a single monosaccharide. The very simplest are single monosaccharides and we've uh, mentioned a few like uh, glucose, galactose and fructose. This is, uh, so, these are sometimes called simple sugars. They can be directly absorbed. They don't have to undergo any further uh, reduction, I'm sorry, uh, hydrolysis, uh, because they're in a form, in the monosaccharide form, that uh, can be easily absorbed. Disaccharides, uh, and again, this, this, I'm not even gonna say this term, it's so it's, 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 it's never said and it's quite misleading. So di disaccharides is the term, include in the diet, found uh, commonly in the diet, includes sucrose, lactose, and maltose, which we showed on that uh, diagram. They can get broken down by enzymatic uh, catalytic activity, uh, hydrolytic activity uh, to monosaccharides. The polysaccharides made of even more multiples of uh, monosaccharides strung together. The important ones that I mentioned are glycogen and starch. And they get broken down to monosaccharides. In this case, for glycogen and starch, it would be to glucose. Cellulose is also a polysaccharide, and you're familiar with it. It's in the paper that you use in your printer, in books that you may or may not open and read. It is uh, a... Um, it is a... Um, uh, insoluble uh, polysaccharide. It is cannot be broken down at all in humans. We can't digest cellulose. Other organisms can. <coughs> There's many organisms that eat plant uh, leaf matter for the cellulose content and can break it down. But we cannot eat it and therefore it cannot be absorbed. Chemical digestion of carbohydrates, uh, once they're broken down into monosaccharides, they can get absorbed across the wall of the small intestine via a co-transport system involving uh, sodium. So they're co-transported with sodium. This is a mechanism which is facilitated diffusion. They'll enter the blood in the capillaries in the villi, and they get transported by that venous blood returning from the <coughs> small intestine, uh, first going to the liver, and they enter into the liver by the hepatic portal vein. I've spoken to you about this before. All the blood draining away from the venous return coming away from the uh, intestines and uh, other organs in the abdominal cavity first go through the liver to be processed there, and they enter into the liver. They all uh, come together and enter at the, uh, in the hepatic portal vein. Chemical digestion of carbohydrates involves the following enzymes. There's salivary amylase, which can act on saliva, uh, uh, no, which can act on uh, starch. Its uh, source is uh, salivary glands. I left out the word glands, but the sal salivary glands are the source. The site of action is in the mouth. Pancreatic amylase, which again acts on starch, but is produced in the pancreas, and the site of action is in the small intestine. It gets uh, secreted via a duct, just like uh, saliva from the salivary glands gets secreted by a duct into the mouth. The pancreatic amylase will get secreted from the pancreas through the pancreatic duct into the small intestine. There are also, coming from the walls of the small intestine, from um, uh, pits or crypts, uh, I think pits, uh, in the wall of the small intestine, there are uh, brush border enzymes that are produced there. So from tiny uh, gland, glandular structures in the wall of the small intestine, you have uh, enzymes which are produced in the small intestine and act on, uh, on, the, on its target substrate in the small intestine. Okay. Everything I've said uh, is on this diagram. 
except I didn't go into some of the details about the brush border enzymes, but notice there are several brush border enzymes that will uh, act on um, carbohydrates, including lactase, maltase, and sucrase. Those were the three, uh, or sucrose rather. Uh, I'm sorry, lactase, maltase, and sucrase, which act on lactose, maltose, and sucrose to uh, break them down. These are all disaccharides that I've spoken about, and the disaccharides that they're made of are shown here, uh, except for uh, maltose, which is two glucoses strung together. Okay, I think the next one would be protein. Yes, protein. Now, proteins, as you know, are large uh, polymer molecules. They're polymers of amino acids strung together. They can be made up of the 20 different uh, amino acid types, the 20 different types of amino acids, and they're strung together uh, with peptide bonds or peptide linkages. Uh, they have a characteristic structure they have a central alpha carbon and a carboxy group on one side. The central alpha carbon is linked to four different uh, atoms or, or groups. There's a carboxy group on one end, a amino group on another end, a hydrogen, and then the R side chain, R indicating that it's going to vary from one amino acid to another and each of the 20 different types uh, are indicated here by R. Here's another uh, amino acid, same basic structure. It could be a different amino acid, but it, overall the same uh, pattern of, of structure. So if you take a small peptide, and peptide refers to small proteins, uh, and <clears throat> sometimes they're actually given, you, you have an uh, indication of how many amino acids, so here it's a dipeptide, that means it has two amino acids, and you can see that there are two central alpha carbons here. And this is the peptide bond that's being cleaved by the action of an enzyme that it can act on this uh, dipeptide. Proteins that, uh, and sorry, I mean <clears throat> enzymes that break down proteins in, are in general called proteases. There are many different specific proteases in the body that are produced and secreted into the gastrointestinal tract. <clears throat> they each have specific kinds of bonds that they will break in the amine, in the proteins. So they uh, act on the bonds on one side or the other of a um, of a particular amino acid. Let's uh, look at a further, this is just a diagram showing the primary structure. The enzymes will, of course, break down. Here is, uh, let me get another, here is shown a central alpha carbon. You know it's a central alpha carbon because it has a uh, carboxylic group or carboxy group, uh, amino group, an R side chain, and a hydrogen. Same with this one. Same with all of them. They are held together by the peptide linkage, and this can be broken down by hydrolytic uh, protease enzymes. So, <clears throat> same setup. Protein, the um, enzyme and its source, the name of an, of an enzyme and its source, where it comes from, the site of action of the enzyme, and how the product is absorbed. And we're showing here where each of these acts. So pepsin, which is a protease produced in the stomach, originally as inactive pepsinogen, and it gets activated in the presence of hydrochloric acid that was produced by cells in the uh, lining of the in the glands of the stomach. So it becomes pepsin, and pepsin can act on uh, large proteins and break them down further into you know smaller structures, which are still fairly large. So it says here, large polypeptides is the product of that. Site of action of these enzymes is on. Uh, the protein in the stomach. 
Uh, the material then moves from the stomach into the small intestine where it gets acted on by pancreatic enzymes, including trypsin, chymotrypsin, and carboxypeptidase, which in their inactive forms are called trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, and procarboxypeptidase. And these act on the larger polypeptides to form small polypeptides and small peptides. You know, we're getting to fairly short length uh, polymers. Production site is the pancreas, action site is the small intestine. Mostly the duodenum for all of these. The other thing of course are the brush border enzymes that I've spoken about. I already talked to you about brush border enzymes and it's a group of enzymes, several enzymes produced by glands in the wall of the small intestine. And I've talked about some of the enzymes that can break down carbohydrates like uh, lactase, which acts on lactose, or maltase, which acts on maltose, uh, sucrase, which acts on sucrose. Now we're looking at the uh, proteases that are uh, also brush border enzymes. And this includes uh, aminopeptidase, carboxypeptidase, and dipeptidases. Aminopeptidases will cleave on the, uh, will cleave particular peptide bonds on the amino side of particular uh, amino acids. Every amino acid has an amino side and a, carbar and a carboxy side, where it has the amino group or the carboxy group. And these enzymes are very specific and they will cut at the site of on one side or the other of particular amino acids. And they'll break it down into individual amino acids. Their action causes a breakdown of polypeptides, peptides into uh, individual amino acids, although some dipeptides and some tripeptides will still be there. Amino acids are absorbed across the wall of the small intestine and in, uh, by uh, facilitated uh, diffusion by, or facilitated transport in co-transport with they are co-transported with sodium ions. They go into the capillary blood and the villi and then are transported out of the liver and up to the, uh, oh, and then are transported from the intestine uh, up to the liver and enter in the liver via the hepatic portal vein. Okay, <clears throat> so as I was saying, um, just like with uh, monosaccharides, the amino acids are absorbed via co-transport with uh, sodium, a form of facilitated diffusion. They'll go into the capillaries, the villi, and go up to the liver via the hepatic port, go into the liver via the hepatic portal vein. The enzymes involved in uh, protein digestion include uh, in the stomach, pepsin, but also renin, which is important, particularly in infants. And in fact, is only that enzyme is only found in infants uh, who are uh, uh, breastfeeding. After they stop breastfeeding, the enzyme stops being produced. This enzyme has the ability to coagulate meat, uh, milk proteins together. Those are enzymes produced in the stomach, pepsin and renin. The small intestine, you have, of course, the pancreatic enzymes that are that can break down protein coming from the pancreas, including trypsin, chymotrypsin, and carboxypeptidase. And the brush border enzymes coming from the glands in the wall of the small intestine, including aminopeptidase, carboxypeptidases, and dipeptidases. And here you see a drawing showing the wall of the, not a great drawing, but a drawing nevertheless of the wall supposedly of the uh, small intestine. And you see that there are, uh, this is supposed to be proteins, a, a strand of protein. And you see the individual amino acids being acted on by chymotrypsin or carboxypeptidase. Also, these enzymes are being uh, released here from the border, the brush border. See, these are brush border enzymes. This is uh, trypsin, which comes from the uh, pancreas, 
and chymotrypsin and carboxypeptidase also comes from the pancreas. It can also act on these. And then they get uh, absorbed across by uh, co-transport with uh, sodium facilitated diffusion. And then they diffuse across into the bloodstream where they get carried away from the site. So what I said is all summarized here. And then we'll move on to lipid. I believe. <clears throat> want to point out to you that it's no different. This is a polymer. It's made up of three chains. This is a lipid molecule. First, we're going to talk about neutral fats, or fat, what we call neutral fat or fat. Or, the, but the proper name is triglyceride. Okay. So here you see the uh, glycerol portion of the molecule and that it is linked in fact to three fatty acid chains and hopefully you know and understand that these fatty acid chains are different from one type of triglyceride to the next they can be different in length they can be different in their which is shown demonstrated by this or illustrated by this uh, these three dots here are supposed to show, indicate that there's a varying length possible here. Uh, some may have uh, double bonds, in which case you would get a, instead of a straight strand, you'd get a bend in it like that. You know, it'd come along and then bend at the point where the double bond is. <clears throat> this adds to the solubility of the, of the fat the more double bonds, the more soluble they are. They can't pack as tightly. So what you see are the three fatty acid chains, in this case, linked to uh, the glycerol. The glycerol breaks off and the fatty acid chains become free with uh, uh, action of <coughs> uh, enzymes. And so here you have the, each of the fatty acid chains and the glycerol. Sometimes only two fatty acid chains are taken off and what's remaining is called a is called monoglyceride, uh, monoglyceride. And that's the end of <clears throat> unit 8 part 5.